Hey folks, this is Max and welcome to another Octa Workflows video. So this video is going to be based on this blog post where I talk about the differences between three workflows list functions for each map and reduce. So the list has three actions that allow you to iterate over a list. Uh, and every one of these use a main flow and then a helper flow. So for each, we'll process um, a list, um, but then the helper flow doesn't return any value back. So again, every item will be processed, but then uh, no value is returned. Now map, and again, most likely you're familiar with for each. Now map will also process each item in a list, but then it allows to return a new list back to the main flow or the calling flow. And then reduce uh, will also process each item in a list, but then it reduces the list to a single value. So it takes, you know, uh, your helper, helper flow will process all the items, but then at the end, it will just return one value back to the main list, okay? Um, so let's see how this works. I have I built flows for each of these examples. And so they're right here. So we're gonna start with the for each. Again, I think most, if you've used workflows before, then you're probably familiar with for each. Um, and then I have other uh, blog posts that specifically talk about for each that I'm gonna reference in the description, but let's start. So the for each is right here. So uh, the provision main and helper. So let me turn these on. All right, and they all use the same, um, they're all the same in a way. Um, the main flow is the same um, for all the examples. So the first card here um, is just assigning a group ID. And then what I do next is they list all group members. Um, so what it does is that it retrieves all the members in this particular group. And as I said, all the examples use the same, um, same flow, all right? So um, I get all the users and then we can just sort of collapse it. Um, this is actually a neat uh, little tip or trick that you can use. Uh, and then, so the list of users is then passed to the for each, right? So this is the card that uh, we're uh, learning how to use today. And then it's passing, so the users are here. And then this is the helper flow, right? And then we can open the helper flow Okay, and now this is the helper flow. And now the helper flow has one input user. And so in this particular case, we're passing the entire object user. Now there are other examples that you can find on the blog or also um, on the YouTube channel where you can pass a particular property from the user, maybe like email or ID. But in this example, we're passing the entire uh, user object. And then going back to the main flow, we can see right here, there is a user and then we're passing the item, which is the current user. Uh, and again, if you wanted to pass something particular, then you would have another uh, field here and then you would select which field to pass, all right? Let's go back. Um, and so uh, next we're using object get multiple and all it does is that it takes the, the object, in this case, it's the user object and it retrieves three fields. ID, first name, and last name. Of course, you can retrieve other fields. And then all I'm doing here in this example is just sort of displaying or printing these values. And the idea here is, even though the flow is called deprovision, the idea is that to show you how to set up for each, right? And then once you have the user ID, uh, you can you know, modify the user if you would like, you can deprovision the user, you can send an email to the user because you also have their email here. So this is really what I wanted to show you is that how to use for each. Um, so you process every user and then you do something here. And now, so the key is when the flow is done, we go back here, the flow, this particular card, I'm sorry, doesn't have a return value. So again, for each will process every item in the list, but it will not return a value back, back here. So you process, you're back here. You can continue, of course, running the flow with other cards, but then again, this particular card does not return the value. Um, so let's do, let's run this quickly. Uh, let's see, this, this is on. Uh, 
Okay, so let me just show you, this is the list of users. Um, I have five users here. Uh, so this is actually myself here. Uh, that's what's being passed to the helper flow. All right, and then if we open the helper flow, uh, we should have five runs here, which just starts here, one, two, three, four, five. And then we can see if I select the first one, it should be, yeah. Um, it's passed, we're getting to get multiple, and then we're retrieving the user ID, the first name and the last name, and then we're just printing the values. So again, you process each item, you can do whatever logic you want in this helper flow, but then the helper flow doesn't return any values back, right? So that's for each. So let's, um, I can close this and let's go back here and let's turn these off. All right, so this is the for each. Now, next one, we're gonna use map and I'm gonna turn these on. And so modify main. Um, so the setup is similar. We got the assigned card, which just sets the ID. We get, um, we list the group members, uh, same as before. And then this is the helper flow. Also similar setup, uh, we're passing in, uh, this is the helper flow, right? We're, well, first we're passing the users. This is the helper flow. And then again, we're passing the entire user object here. Um, but the difference is that we do, this card does return a value. So it actually returns a new list. So the difference before each would process items, no return value. This one is called map. And so map will return a new list back to this flow, to the main flow. And then you can use this list in other cards, right? In this example, I'm just using the assign really just to print or display the new list. But let's open the helper flow. All right, so same setup, we're passing, this is the um, helper flow uh, first card, we're passing the entire user. Uh, as before, we're using get multiple and then we're retrieving ID, first name and last name. And so in this particular example, we need a new list where the format is last name, that first name. So perhaps you have a system where you need to create new accounts and the system requires the username to be in last name, that first name format. Of course, you can change it, it's up to you. Um, what I mean is that you can have any other logic here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm doing text uh, concatenate here, and I'm using the last name, uh, then a, um, a period, right? And then uh, first name, and I get a username that's last name, first name. And what I do is I use a return card. So what the way this works is that every item is processed is going to be returned and put into a list, right? And then once this, once all the items is processed, that list will contain all the items that were returned in, right? And then we know that it has the last name, first name format. And that's what we're gonna get here, all right? So let's run this. All right, and then right away we can see, if I scroll in the map, that we can see we're getting this list back with last name, first name um, format. And if I open one of them, uh, let's open the helper flow. And again, I have five runs here. I'm opening the first one. This is again, this is me um, that I can see I got the last name, that first name, this is the result. And then this item is returned back into a list, right? And so again, once this helper flow is done, that list will contain all the items in this format. All right. Um, so let me, let me close this. So let me go back. Um, so the difference between for each Again, no value is returned. We process all the items, no value is returned. The map, we also process every item, but then a new list is returned. And then you know, it's really up to you what you put in that list. Okay, so this is a um, list map card. All right, now the last one, 
is reduce and it's right here let me open it let's also open the well we'll open this in a second so uh, again very similar setup we got the group id the difference now here is that i have a variable called memo and i'm going to talk about it in a second then we list the group members for this particular group and then the users are passed to this card now this is uh, list reduce card and then we're passing the the whole item but notice here we also get the memo so the way this works and let's open now the helper flow so the is that you get a list but then the return value is just a single uh value at the end and that's right here okay so you get a list and the list i think you know that's the name the list is reduced to a single value okay um so let's i'm going to run this it's really easy to understand w w uh, once you see uh when the flow runs but um the setup is similar here it got the user object being passed now notice i do have the memo variable again you're going to see it once i show you the flow history uh, same here we get get multiple uh, instead of id i get the email first name last name and then i create this use this compose card to create this message and then the message is returned back right and once the flow is done running the list reduce card will return a single message okay well let me show you how this works that it kind of a as it runs it builds the message this particular message but let me let me test this let me run this all right so notice this says the right here it says people list and this is the initial value people list and let me show you and this is the final list. So notice it says people list, and then it lists all the users, right? Now it looks like a list, but it's actually just a text. So it, it is a single value. So let's open the helper flow. And I'll show you what, how this looks, how this works. Okay, so this is the first run right here. Uh, if I go here, so notice what happens is that on the very first run, uh, we've got the memo which is people list, right? That's the original value. It's passed in the compose card. Uh, and then what it does at people list is being combined with the first user, which is me in this case again. So the, the message after the first run says people list and then one user here. And now what happens is that notice that this user, this, sorry, this message is returned, okay? Now let's look at the second run. Now the second run, notice that the memo is now set to the previous value that was returned. Okay. And now we process, you know, we get the next user and notice how the message looks now that people list plus another user, right? The Stella Green. So Stella Green is from here and and from here right so that's the next user and then this message is returned back if i look at the next one this is how it looks so this is the initial value into the helper flow again i got two users now and then i add one more and then it's returned let's look at the next one you're probably kind of a, getting the idea that this is the value into the helper flow. Now we have three users. Now we add one more, Alicia, and Alicia is returned. And then on the last run, you probably guessed, the value into the helper flow is now four users. Now we, we process the last one, which is uh, Jacqueline here. And then we return the list, right? We return the final message because we now process all the users. So now this is the final message. So if I go back, as you can see, this is the final message. Okay, so that's how it works. Again, um, it's really best, I think, my opinion to understand if you run this and kind of look at the flow, it really helps to understand how it works, but it basically builds the message. I guess if there's some, almost like a recursion, a little bit of recursion here, right? You pass in, um, you build the message, 
with previous data until you, you're done processing uh, all the items. Okay, so let's go back here. And again, so this message has all the information, all, all the messages together. So an example of this could be, uh, let's say you, you get a list of users and you need to send an email to, to, your, to the administrator or the manager and say, hey, these people you know, completed um, some training. Okay, so you want to build the message with all the users. So that's one example where you can use list reduce. All right, um, but that's all I wanted to show you. Um, again, three examples for each map and reduce. Um, I, you know, this blog post, I'll, I'll mention it, I'll reference it in the, uh, in the video, but then it explains how, again, each example works. Uh, and then there is a link um, to learn more. There is a blog post for each of these um, uh, cards to help you learn more uh, how to set up, you know, for each and then map and then reduce. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.